So right now we're looking at the engine out of the tractor. Uh, this is the end that would have the flywheel on it, go to the transmission, uh, power the wheels and the PTO. And this end we'd have uh, the cooling fan, the water pump, the radiator would be over here. But what we're looking at right now is the silver part is the hydraulic pump. So this actually had a pair of hard lines here that went back to the hydraulic controls on the tractor. So as long as the tractor is idling, it's giving power to the pump and it keeps the hydraulics working, whether or not the clutch is pushed in, anything like that. But I really have no idea how this hydraulic pump works. So I think what I wanna do is remove it and take a look. I'm guessing there's probably a chain back in here and there's some sort of a shaft down the middle because the distributor is connected right onto the end of the pump. So I'm gonna try pulling off the distributor, pull off the pump, see how it all works, and see if this pump might be appropriate to simply add an electric motor to, to electrify the hydraulics on the tractor. So it looks like in here, we have this little connection that runs the distributor and this part it looks like is lubricated with the hydraulic fluid as best I can tell. So we might not be able to use this pump separate from this. So here's the end of the hydraulic pump. Uh, you can see kind of this weird coupler here that engaged with the distributor and uh, some oil came out right away, so I'm assuming the hydraulic fluid um, also lubricates the pump here. So now I'll, I'll just try to take this off then. Okay, it looks like it's ready to come right off. I don't know what's on the inside, if it's a little chain or gears or what, so we'll find out in a second. I'm gonna pull straight that way, I think, as best I can. Ooh, look at this. Oh, it's got some nice gearing right on the back there. Very cool. I moved a light just trying to get a better view in there so you can see that sprocket that, that not only powers the hydraulic pump, but also the distributor. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is off the bottom of the distributor here is the uh, connection for, I believe that was the tachometer right there. So if I did reuse the pump and maybe I, I won't need the distributor, maybe I could split it right here. And that way that would still leave me with a mechanical tachometer. So I could at least um, make sure I'm running the pump at the right speed. So I think I'll count the gear teeth here. Um, frankly, it's easy for me to lose track, so I'm gonna mark one of the teeth, and then I'll just use a little probe to go along and count them all. 24. Now I'm gonna count it again, so I don't screw it up. I got 24 on that. Might be good to write that down. There we go, 24 teeth on that. So the question now is how exactly am I going to count the gear teeth in here? Um, I can only see a few of them. So let me spin the engine here and show you what else I'm thinking. And, ah! Yeah, I wasn't expecting that to come out. Yeah, it's just got a brass bushing in there. Slides right out. And there's a hole, which it looks like just lets the hydraulic fluid through for lubricating this. So if we look down here now, we can see the end of our crankshaft and it's got a belt going up to the fan. So of course, you know, right here is where the radiator is going to be. Um, but you'll notice these are the actual bolt mounting points for the front end. Now what's interesting about that is that is actually a separate casting. You can see a seam line right here. So it's not the true engine block itself. It's kind of a big plate that's on the end of here, which appears to cover 
uh, that gear that goes to where the pump was. So, in theory, if I could take that plate off, so I might not even have to take the fan off, but I definitely need to take this off. I'm um, not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that. Fortunately, that's got a hole, so I think I can, actually, I don't know. <laughs> so I need to loosen that nut while holding that still. Maybe on the back end, I can uh, attach something in place of where the flywheel was. And uh, I don't think I have a socket that big. That That is a huge nut. But if I could get that off, I think I could just unbolt the other bolts that are on here and pull this entire plate off here. I do have a monkey wrench, which is never the right uh, tool. But on the back side of this, I basically just jammed a bar through uh, to keep it from spinning. So who knows, maybe we'll get lucky here. Unless I use a chisel or something like that, that might work. I think I loosened the nut. Right. Is that a euphemism? No, it's not a euphemism. Oh, that's good. Remember, when you use a chisel to pound counterclockwise. That pulley probably needs to get pulleyed off. So this here is a six inch jaw puller. This is, it's pretty basic, it's like 20 bucks at the auto parts store. Nothing fancy. So I'm just hooking it around the pulley. Look at that. Pulled off the pulley. So that was the belt going up to the water pump and fan. And then this junky one was going to the 12 volt generator. So now without all that junk in the way, if I wanna pull this off the end, I mean, it looks like there's just a number of bolts here and I think I can pull it right off. Okay, I got my engine hoist out so we can uh, support the motor, lift it up a little bit, see if I can get at those bolts underneath. I just can't, I just can't believe how many uh, different fluids come out of engines. Every time I move this, there's more oil, hydraulic fluid, coolant. Had to invest in a big bag of that uh, Oil slurp up fancy kitty litter stuff. Drip, 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 dripping all over. Ugh. Okay, that looks cool. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, this is the crankshaft. Then the gearing and going over here. Uh, that goes back up there. I believe that's the governor. But what I'm interested in is the number of teeth on here, the number of teeth on here, and the number of teeth that were on the hydraulic pump so we can figure out how fast the hydraulic pump was spinning. The, the sprocket on the main shaft here, 24 teeth. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. So right here on the crankshaft, this gear has 24 teeth. This next one over has 48 teeth. And then on the pump, that was 24 teeth. So that's a two to one ratio if we reduce it. So we've got one here, one over here, and two in the middle, and all this is really doing is just passing the power from here to here, 
and with gears you reverse direction. So this is going clockwise, this is going counterclockwise, that's going clockwise. So unless I've really missed something, uh, there is no gear reduction. It's one to one. So that means the pump here is spinning the same speed and the same direction as the crankshaft. Okay, so in the time since I've taken this off of the motor, I've had an opportunity to figure out how much power this will consume, and I did get to talk to an engineering friend of mine. Uh, what I did was I was able to find out a part number for the motor, look up specs on it, do a little bit of math, and it looks like to have this pump running kind of full tilt so that we can power something like a bucket loader, this could use about 10 horsepower. Now that's not a big deal if you've got a 40 horsepower engine and this is rigged directly off of that. Uh, the issue here is I'd love to use that Nissan Leaf motor in this tractor and the Leaf motor doesn't have a tail shaft so there's no easy way to attach this to that motor the way it was attached to the engine, uh, which is really a shame. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, AC motors out there with tail shafts on them, go figure. Now, there are a lot of DC motors out there. In fact, I have a 13-inch forklift motor with a nice big tail shaft. And for simplicity, I think I could just slap it right in there, bolt this on the back end of it. Um, I'd even be able to use the stock tachometer coming off of here. So I'd, I'd even have uh, you know the RPM gauge and speedometer, uh, just like stock, up on the dashboard of the tractor, which would be fantastic, except I kind of have my heart set on using an AC motor, uh, besides being brushless, never having to replace or maintain those, uh, regenerative brakes would also be really nice just because of a lot of these older tractors didn't have great brakes as they kind of relied a bit on the engine compression to be able to control the speed. Of course, without the engine, we don't have any engine compression and regenerative brakes would be a nice substitute for that. Now, instead of having this run directly off of our traction motor, Another way we could do it is with a separate dedicated motor, um, but it can't be a 12 volt DC motor because at 10 horsepower, uh, 12 volts, that would be something like 600 amps. Uh, that's just a ton of current. I'd need super thick cables and we'd probably just end up melting motors doing that. Uh, I would, however, want uh, the hydraulic motor and the main motor to be running at the same voltage. Otherwise, we gotta mess around with DC to DC converters. And uh, to get one that's rated at, at pretty high current, those actually get expensive very quickly. Um, one way of doing it is if it was a 48 volt motor and a 48 volt motor, that would work great. Uh, typically, AC motors don't run at those low voltages, but we could do it on the DC side. Basically, just forklift parts would make it really, really easy. Um, on the other side of things though, if we go high voltage, I thought, well, there's not really any high voltage AC motors for something like this. And I'm like, duh, of course there are. You know, your standard 120 volt AC, 240 volt AC. Why not use an AC motor with one of these? I'd need a second inverter. And this doesn't sound like too much of a stretch. Um, actually a Chevy Volt, uh, has dual outputs on its motor controller because that car is a hybrid. So instead of using a Nissan Leaf motor controller, maybe I could use a Chevy Volt motor controller, have one output to the, the main motor pushing the tractor around, have a secondary one running a, a small AC motor running the hydraulic pump. Now I'd still have to make sure I got a 10 horsepower motor. It might be challenging to find a nice compact one and I might have to turn it 90 degrees or otherwise relocate it here. But I think that's actually within the realm of possibility. Um, let me know what you think. Um, I enjoy working on projects like these. I learn a lot, but I haven't worked on tractors before. Hydraulics, this is all pretty new to me, but that's kind of the point of it too, is that I have the opportunity to learn as I go, share it with you, and hopefully I can get some uh, constructive criticism from you in return. So I hope you like learning about this kind of stuff as much as I do. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, make sure you have notifications turned on on YouTube so that when you subscribe, you actually do get those notifications. So you can be the next one to uh, uh, get the latest videos as they come out. And until next time, stay charged up.